Hi, everybody, and, and just welcome to uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints group meeting today. I would ask the blessing, you know, on all of you in your lives. Uh, a lot of changes this last week, with changes in government, changes in weather, other things. Um, just wanted to begin by just saying that our, our thoughts are for you and with you. And and uh, yesterday, again, as each each week, I get a chance to go out and, and uh, went out to... Big Sur, and what a beautiful day to, it was. Uh, one of those days that everything is so clear that you almost can see the curvature of the world. You know, you you look at the ocean and that direct line between sky and sea, and uh, it was great. Uh, Rod they introduced me to a few of the places up there, Redwood Gulch, and a few places. But uh, I went up to uh, uh, up. Again, remember Big Sur, there's lots of areas where it's just falling into the ocean. And so you go past all those areas of slides. And what I want to concentrate on is maybe these bridges. You know, you wouldn't be able to go up very far without a bridge. Uh, they're just places where roads cannot be built. Mm -hmm. And um, so going across a number of bridges up to a place just past Lime Kiln, a place where they actually had to build a uh, overpass to keep the because the rocks would just fall on the road all the time so it's a little canopy and then a place called uh, twitchell's elevator now it's called twitchell's elevator because the trail goes straight up but that's on the back part of this lime kiln and I was able to go down into the that that park and it was interesting uh this was right in the area of the fire so i was just surveying damage and two things there was uh you know, one of the big trees had fallen on one of the big bridges there in the park that made it easier for the, the visitors to go across and smashed it. So they're not going to open that soon. But on one of the trails up to a beautiful waterfall, there is no bridges. There's just a number of logs and rocks across the trail. And you have to be very, very careful, it's slippery, and, and it's harder. And, you know, the ease that bridges make. And um, so I just wanted to mention that because I'd like to begin today with a prayer and then we'll have a song about bridges over troubled waters. It's a more of a contemporary song, but I'll introduce it. So let's let's pray together. Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day. We're grateful to be together as brothers. Ask a blessing on those uh, who listen and attend, and those people that, uh, again, assist uh, the patients at Ash. We'd ask that that would bless the staff, that they might be inspired of uh, how to best direct uh, the lives and minds of those who are troubled at this time, that they might be bridges to bring them to a better place. We ask that there might be kindness shown everywhere, that uh, particularly those patients there, and they might use the freedoms that they do have to share and be kind to one another, that they might uh, be blessed with the Spirit, that they can, again, heal and, and realize God's love for them in their lives. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And so this, again, with the idea of bridges, um, uh, let's go ahead and begin a, a song. Uh, it's a famous one that uh, but has a lot of import, Bridges Over Troubled Waters. And it's going to be sung, interestingly enough, by a, a Latter-day Saint uh, father and daughter. I, I want you to notice the interaction between a father's love and the daughter, uh, daughter's love back.
when you're down and out when you're on the street when evening falls so hard i will comfort you i'll take darkness comes and pain is all around like a bridge over troubled waters I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled Sail on, silver girl, sail on by, your time has come to shine, all your dreams are on their way, see how they shine, and if you What a beautiful song that was i brought back memories i remember when that was first produced <laughs> and it was a just very good song um and i it the part of where it talked about needing a friend i thought oh there was so many times in my life when the right person has come along who's been a friend to help me out when i was in need and when i i had that need that we all do at times to have someone cross over and help us out and I, like Doug, I like to get out and go do things. And I was up on the coast too this week, or this during this week, took my son up. We were looking for clay. He loves to do, um, make things out of clay. And uh, this one beach we were on, uh, got onto it. And this poor, uh, over a thousand pound elephant seal was there all by himself. And I thought he needs a friend. So I, uh, I went up and said hello to him. And uh, it was a, it was a, Kind of a fun old thing. He got up and talked to me a little bit, and it was kind of a fun, fun exchange there with the with the seal. But, um, brother, we, the the talk we have today is again, uh, it's by Elder Jimenez. He's a uh, another leader in the church, and and he works a lot with missionary efforts and things of that nature. And he's just, I think you're really going to enjoy it. He is. Uh, from Chile, which is right next to where, as many of you know, I serve my mission, and and he's he's very insightful in dealing, going through those troubled waters, going through those times that are hard, and and trying to come out of it with a good meaning when it's all done and said. And so I, I again, Doug, if you'd like to go ahead and get started with the Elder Jimenez, that'd be wonderful. And, and again, brother, you're going to love it. Back in the mid-90s, during my college years, I was part of the fourth company of the Santiago Fire Department in Chile. While serving there, 
I lived at the fire station as part of the night guard. Toward the end of the year, I was told that I had to be at the fire station on New Year's Eve because on that day there was almost always some emergency. Surprised, I replied, really? Well, I remember waiting with my associates when, at midnight, fireworks began shooting off in downtown Santiago. We started hugging each other with well wishes for the new year. Suddenly, the bells at the fire station began ringing, indicating that there was an emergency. We got our equipment and jumped on the fire engine. On our way to the emergency, as we passed crowds of people celebrating the new year, I noticed that they were largely unconcerned and carefree. They were relaxed and enjoying the warm summer night. Yet, somewhere nearby, the people we were hurrying to help were in serious trouble. This experience helped me realize that although our lives may at times be relatively smooth, the time will come for each of us when we will face unexpected challenges and storms that will push the limits of our ability to endure. Physical, mental, family, and employment challenges, natural disasters, and other matters of life or death are but some of the examples of the storms that we will face in this life. When faced with these storms, we often experience feelings of despair or, fe or fear. President Russell M. Nelson said, faith is the antidote for fear, end of quote. Faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. As I have seen the storms that affect pe people's lives, I have concluded that no matter what kind of a storm is battering us, regardless of whether there is a solution to it or whether there is an end in sight, there is only one refuge, and it is the same for all type of storms. This single refuge provided by our Heavenly Father is our Lord Jesus Christ and His Atonement. None of us are exempt from facing these storms. Hilleman, a Book of Mormon prophet, taught us as follows. Remember that it's upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, he shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which you are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. Elder Robert D. Health, who had his own experiences with enduring storms, said, suffering is universal. How we react to suffering is individual. Suffering can take us one of two ways. It can be a strengthening and purifying experience combined with faith, or it can be a destructive force in our lives if we do not have the faith in the Lord's atoning sacrifice." End of quote. In order to enjoy the refuge that Jesus Christ and his atonement offer, we must have faith in him, a faith that will allow us to rise above all the pains of a limited, earthly perspective. He has promised that he will make our burdens light if we come unto him in all that we do. Come unto me, he said, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is said that to one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. However, we have limited understanding of the things that happen here on earth. And often we do not have answers to the question of why. Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? What am I supposed to learn? When answers evade us, that is when the words expressed by our Savior to the Prophet Joseph Smith in Liberty Jail are completely applicable. My son, P. 
peace be unto thy soul. Thy adversity and thy afflictions shall be but a small moment. And then, if thou endure it well, God shall excel thee on high. Although many people indeed believe in Jesus Christ, the key question is whether we believe him and whether we believe the things that he teaches us and asks us to do. Perhaps someone might think, what does Jesus Christ know about what is happening to me? How does he know what I need to be happy? Truly, it was our Redeemer and Intercessor to whom the prophet Isaiah was referring when he said, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. The Apostle Peter also taught us about the Savior, saying, Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Although the time of Peter's own martyrdom was approaching, his words are not filled with fear or pessimism. Rather, he taught the saints to rejoice, even though they were in heaviness through many fall temptations. Peter counseled us to remember that the trial of our faith, though it be tried with fire, would lead to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ and to the salvation of our souls. Peter continued, Beloved, think it not a strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. President Russell M. Nelson taught that saints can be happy under every circumstance. When the focus of our lives is on God's plan of salvation and Jesus Christ and his gospel, we can feel joy regardless of what is happening or not happening in our lives. Joy comes from and because of him. He is the source of all joy." End of quote. Of course, it is easier to say these things when we are not in the midst of a storm than to live and apply them during the storm. But as your brother, I hope you can feel that I sincerely want to share with you how valuable it is to know that Jesus Christ and his atonement are the refuge that we all need, regardless of the storm that are battering our lives. I know that we are all children of God, that he loves us, and that we are not alone. I invite you to come and see that he can lighten your burdens and be the refuge you are seeking. Come and help others find the refuge that they so yearn for. Come and stay with us in this refuge, which will help you resist the storms of life. There is no doubt in my heart that if you come, you will see, you will help, and you will stay. The prophet Alma testified the following to his son Hilaman. I do know that whosoever shall put their trust in God shall be supported in their trials and their travels and their afflictions and shall be lifted up at the last day. The Savior himself said, Let your hearts be comforted, for all flesh is in my hands. Be still and know that I am God. Wherefore, fear not, even unto death, for in this world your joy is not full, but in me your joy is full. The hymn, Be Still, My Soul, which has touched my heart on many occasions, has a message of comfort for our souls. The lyrics read as follows. Be still, my soul. The hour is hating on when we shall be forever with the Lord when disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow for God, love's purest joys restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed we shall meet 
at last. As we face the storms of life, I know that if we make our best effort and rely upon Jesus Christ and his atonement as our refuge, we will be blessed with the relief, comfort, strength, temperance, and peace that we are seeking with certainty in our hearts that at the end of our time here on earth, we will hear the words of the master, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. That was an excellent talk from Brother Jimenez, and, and uh, I'm hoping that you ha maybe got two things from what we've just talked about. Uh, <clears throat> when you saw Brother Shaw look at his daughter, the love that he had, you know, just in his eyes, he wanted the absolute best for his, his daughter, and that's, it's undeniable. I, I just want you to understand that you have a Heavenly Father <clears throat> that has that same love for you and wants the absolute best for you. And many of you didn't have the advantage of an earthly father like him, but you do have a heavenly father. And then this idea of a refuge, just one of their ideas, I was <clears throat> making through my way through this trail where the fire had raced up the hill. Uh, there were many trees that were burnt and, and fallen on the trail. Uh, now, being resourceful, I can go over them and under them and around them. You know, it's not comfortable. It's uh, sometimes difficult on your hands and knees, <clears throat> sometimes going down the hill. But there are things that you can't, you get to the trail where it ends of that precipice. You can't go further. You need a bridge. And I would suggest that that bridge is Jesus Christ, who has that, who can fill the gap between where you are and where you need to be, and who you are and who you need to be. And also to leave the past behind, to go to that promised land. And I can testify to you that that, that bridge is there. It might be still under construction in some of our cases, but it's there and we need to take those first steps forward because we cannot do it on our own. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, Doug. Thank you very much. I lots of thoughts came through my mind as I'm thinking about that all of us have those troubled waters that we need to cross over. We all have those, those times we need that. And I was with a, uh, a really great man about two weeks ago, we were doing a volunteer project downtown Paso Robles. And he was telling me of his experiences and what he had been going through for the last several years young man got married and had some children and, and started drinking more than he should. And it became worse and worse and worse. And it came to the point where he had lost his, his family and was on his own, uh, basically just living off the street. And he ran to the right people and started reading the scriptures again. And all of a sudden turned his life around. And it was as, um, you know, he's looking at, okay, my life is, is in a bad place right now. I need to make it better. I know I can make it better. How can I do this? And through praying to, to Heavenly Father and, to, and asking for the help, his help, and through reading and getting more, more help from the scriptures, he got what he needed and he was able to pull himself out and he's able to cross that river, that, you know, make that bridge across that river. His, his bridge of this thing was the bridge of Christ and it got him across. And he said, now the big thing that hit me, it was something that also came up with uh, Elder Jimenez when he was talking. He said, it was the joy that Christ promises us. He said, once he decided, made that decision, he was leaving that behind him and going, uh, you know, get, again, got on that bridge and got over. All of a sudden, he said, the joy was fabulous. All of a sudden, life was a wonderful place to be. And he had 
huge change in his life. And it's things that I've seen in my life too. And, and all of us can can have our down times, but we can make it out. And I really appreciated what this brother had described to me and also Brother Jimenez. I mean, he was describing as brother and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have a father in heaven that loves us and wants us to be happy and find joy in this life. And he's given us a path. He's given us a bridge to get over those troubled waters. But we just need to use it. And I, too, leave these things with you with my testimony of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Father. Now, brethren, I'd like to go ahead and, and close with prayer. If you'd like to please join me. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank thee for this Sabbath day, for the time we have to, to think of thee and honor thee and the sacrifice of thy son. We thank thee for the opportunities that thou has given us to, to learn and to grow in this life. Please bless us with thy guiding spirit that we might be able to make it through our hardships in this life. We might be able to find the joy that thou hast promised us. And we ask that thou will be with our brethren at, at the state hospital, that they will at this time be able to feel thy spirit, and know that thou art there to help them, that they might be able to start building the bridges that will help them get across the troubled times that are upon them and find the blessings and the wonderful things that thou hast promised us all. And we again thank thee for thy spirit that helps us as well. And we say the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye-bye. I was talking and didn't, nothing came out. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, anything for next week? That's my idea. You're still, you're still recording right now.